Welcome to Laconia, visitor. You're here to learn about Spartan society, yes? Then I won't stop you. My name is Leonidas. I am a king of Sparta. But do not think of me as some idle aristocrat softened by luxury. When Spartans go to war, I stand alongside them, shield to shield. And my spear tastes the same blood as those of my men. Sparta is a glorious place, and you should feel honored to be here. Honored, and perhaps somewhat frightened. Sparta had a unique hierarchy, especially compared to the rest of Greece. Everyone had their place, and you will soon learn what those places were. I will find you again once your visit has ended. Until then, visitor. Spartan society was structured around austerity, self-sufficiency, and a hostility towards foreign elements. It was divided into three social classes, citizens, perioikoi, and helots. Citizens were called Spartans or homoioi. They were free men and women with mostly equal rights and wealth, though their contributions to political life were extremely limited. The perioikoi lived in surrounding areas under Spartan control. They cultivated the land and were primarily merchants and craftsmen. They were also part of the army, and their lands were the first line of defense in the event of a hostile attack. Helots were Sparta's lowest class. They were people who had lost their freedom to the Spartans, and they served the city as slaves. Helots were considered property instead of people. As a result, they had no political or civil rights. Helots made up the majority of Sparta's population. According to Polydeuces, they lingered between slavery and freedom. Two elements made Helots differ from other slaves. They were allowed to form their own families, and they were publicly owned by the city of Sparta instead of private citizens. Because Helots were deemed public property, they could not be sold as merchandise. They mostly worked to cultivate the land, but also fought in wars alongside the Spartans. While they gave the fruits of their labor to Sparta, they also kept a fair part of it for themselves. This practice allowed some helots to make enough money to buy their own freedom. Alternatively, if a helot served the state well enough in military campaigns, they could also be granted civil rights. The founding of Sparta is dated around the 9th century BCE. Historical information about the city is limited, but it was known to extend into the region of Laconia. Over time, Sparta started encroaching on the territory of Messenia, eventually leading to war. Sparta gained more land in this conflict, which they divided between their citizens and the Perioikoi. The aftermath of the Second Mycenaean War, from 640 to 620 BCE, then divided the population into three groups, the Homoioi, the Perioikoi, and the Helots. The Helots of Laconia mostly respected Sparta's rule and did not cause much trouble. However, Helots from Mycenae supposedly resisted the Spartans, although sources can only confirm one revolt for certain, which occurred in Mycenae in 464 BCE. During the 5th century BCE, Helots were quite active in the army, especially during the Peloponnesian War. They served as hoplites on land and as rowers during naval battles. In both cases, they gave Sparta an important numerical advantage. For every Spartan on the battlefield, there were at least seven Helots. 
Although many ancient sources say Spartans had a hostile relationship with Helots, they were much more likely to treat them better in times of war. For example, when 300 Helots and 120 elite Spartans were captured by Athens during the Battle of Sphacteria in 425 BCE, the Spartans promised the Helots their freedom if they served them well in combat. Similarly, around the same time, the Spartan general Brasidas fought a battle alongside 700 Helots. Impressed by their courage and loyalty, Brasidas later freed them all and allowed them to join the Perioikoi. Perioikoi were another group of Sparta's population. They lived not in the city itself, but in its surrounding areas. The Perioikoi were never hostile against the Spartans. In fact, both groups together were known by the collective name Lacedaemonians. Perioikic cities had their own autonomy and sanctuaries, but they were always bound to Sparta. They were allowed to develop their own local laws and economies, but could never reach a level of prosperity that rivaled their parent state. I see you finished. I hope you have a better appreciation for Spartan society. Nothing we do is without a reason, and every man, woman, and child has a role to play. What would you like to do? Then you may leave. Farewell, visitor. <laughs> 